So like I said, I'm not afraid to get on this horse. Has she, is she as prepped as well as some of the other colts I get on for the first time to ride? No, I don't think she is. She still has some issues with letting her flight instincts take over and get carried away. She's not especially good at her bending yet. She likes to suck back on things. But she hasn't bucked since the first day that I put the big saddle on her and she humped around a little bit getting used to it. She hasn't shown any indication of doing that ever since. So that is the only saving grace with her at this point on her foundations and her willingness to settle down when things get out of control. <clears throat> and be able to come back to you and look for that support a little bit and get petted on and relax. So I saw an opportunity here. And sometimes you get to a point where you just have to see what happens, you know. There's only so many hours in the day and days of the week that I have a chance to work with this horse. And I want to give her the best job I can do, even if it means, I mean, that's what I get paid for, is to give her a little bit of, I get paid to take chances on these guys. And so does everybody else out there in the training world. You're paying them for their professional opinions on things and their experience and their willingness to put their bones on the line and get broken so you don't have to. So you might want to keep that in mind when you start bad mouthing your trainers and telling them they're not doing a good job because they're not doing it like you expected them to do it. She's going to that left eye right off the bat, even with me being up here. Even though I'm trying to pull her to the right, she's going to that left eye where she's more comfortable and bending her head that way. <clears throat> okay, she's So we'll try and work a little bit here to her left, if we can, and maybe she'll be a little more settled going to the left, if we can break her feet loose a little bit here. This would be a good place to have a good saddle horse in here that could kind of control her movements and bump her around a little bit, get those hindquarters freed up for me a little bit, and get her to take a step. But something that I have to deal with here. See, that's, that's the issue with a one-eyed horse, or an incapacitated horse on that side. When she sees my hand out there in that rain out there, she's getting herself a little bit tense and balled up. And you can see it in her neck and in her back. She goes to rolling her back up a little bit, and she's going like, no, that's my bad side, and things are happening bad over there. And I need to get back over here to my left-hand side. See, she's not afraid of my hand being out here. She bends, she sees it. She doesn't know quite how to step that way yet. 
but she's okay with my hand being over here. I try to I try to get her back over here to this side where she's not as comfortable. See that? And try to get her eye to come over here and let her know that I'm over here too and it's okay. But if I go out too far with that hand and she sees it, then she gets herself a little balled up. And I gotta really pull her head here to get her to bend over there on that side. <clears throat> and that's why I encourage folks, when they're bringing horses to me, especially young horses, this is all the stuff, this bend and inflection, you cannot emphasize how important that is to work in these horses and getting them flexible and bending so that I can get their heads around and direct them without them being upset and without them being real tense and stiff and not really listening. Now she's a little distracted with the horses outside there. See, in and of itself, it's not me being on her back. She's okay a little bit with that, but it's all new and the direction's all new. Try and get her to understand it's okay that we can move your feet a little bit and go someplace without getting upset. And I was able to get her, when she did move her feet, she kind of lost control. But I was able to get her back under control and settle her down. And now she's just kind of confused and doesn't really know where to go. And, you know, if I was a hotshot bronc rider that had less brains than common sense, I could have probably just let her head go and rode the hump out and, and got her going, but I'm not that young and spry anymore, so I do things a bit differently than you see on TV or at a colt starting clinic where you got 15, 20 other colts that's moving around and kind of bumps bumps them together and, and uh, you know, get some moving for you. What did he say? That's okay, I want her to turn someplace and do something here. This is another issue with a real narrow horse that don't know how to use their feet. When they get them spraddled out there to hold your weight and keep their balance because they don't know how to move their feet real good, then they kind of get locked up and they stand there and they can't figure out how to get going. And chances are pretty good when she does get tired of standing spraddle legged like that in the front and kind of bunched up in the back, she's going to probably take another jump with me here and I might have to give her a little more room to jump rather than just coming down and setting down on her right off like I did initially to keep her under control. But I don't have to, I'm not under a four day timeline on a cold starting clinic to get her to do something here. I can sit here all day if I need to. and we'll just work on getting her nose to bend a little better until she, so she can get used to seeing my hand out here. And learning 
how to bend with me up here and figure out that I'm still back here and she can figure out what I'm doing over here on this side too. rattled up there. And then perhaps she'll figure out how to take a step out without having to spraddle out. <laughs> but because she is so mellow, you know, on the ground, once she's adapted to me sitting up here, now she's, she's like, all right, I can deal with you sitting up there, but I don't know what to do next. And then she'll just have a tendency with the more I pet and I do, the more she's going to start licking and chewing a little bit, and she's going to kind of doze off. i got to keep her from doing that by doing something, even if it's not getting her feet to go. i got to keep her bending or flexing or feeling me walking, you know, rocking around up here or something to keep her awake in case she nods off a bit and something happens to spook her, which there's plenty of things around here that can jump out and get her upset a little bit. what's going on here. See there, with just that little bit of moving her front or moving her front quarters across a little bit, she was able to more readily do that when I got her feet a little bit in place to be able to give her the opportunity to do it and figure out how to get those feet unlocked a little bit there. And the minute I get a little foot movement out of her. I give her her head and give her the option to move forward or continue moving anywhere she wants to go. I don't really care where that is on this first drive. All I want her to do is just do something productive. And hell, up to this point, you know, with her, if she was really, really touchy like one of the mares I had in here a couple years ago that I worked and worked and worked on and when I got on her for the first ride she was pretty gnarly and she gave, she gave me a good ride spent about 30 minutes on her where normally my first ride on these horses is about 10-15 minutes if they walk out okay you know it might take some time for them to figure out how to do it but if I get 
a couple loops around at a nice easy walk and we're getting along and I'm petting and they're not getting themselves flustered and then we call life good for that first ride because she's not wrecked and I'm not wrecked and we can always build on that tomorrow. Because she's a little bit gangly on her feet and not real willing to move here, we'll work on other things until she kind of gets tired of standing here and needs to move her feet a little bit and then we'll go with that. But it might take a bit. A little progress. No. We're just, we're getting there. We're getting progress. She's figuring out that this is okay. I can actually pick my feet up off the ground when somebody's sitting on me. Life's not bad. As long as I can get her hind quarters moving and get her front quarters moving a little bit, it's only a matter of time before she puts two and two together and figures out how to figures out how to get them going forward rather than just around in a circle. She's gotten a lot more comfortable with my hand being out here now. She's kind of adapted to it and she's not as afraid and slinky about it. So that for her is just a major accomplishment right there. You know, all the rest of it comes in time as we go along here. And I don't have to do it in four days. I still got three more weeks with this horse. To try and give her the best possible start I can. So you might not think it's the right way to do it. And you might think, well, you gotta just get after her and let her get her feet moving and settle out and yada yada yada. Well, if that's the way you want to do it, more power to you. If you want to do it with her, come on down, I'll let you. And we'll take videos of you too and see how well you get along. You know, even though she's a little bit behind on the power curve on her foundation from what a lot of colts are when I get on them for the first time, I don't know that there's very goddamn many trainers out there that'll leave a colt with a week's work done to them, leave them sit for two days and then come in here and, and get on them and, and do a first ride. 
And I'm not doing it for my ego or I'm not doing it to show off for you guys. I just happen to think right at that particular moment that I was in a good spot and she was standing and retaining, retaining what we did the last time I had her up to the rail. <clears throat> And she was standing good, and I got to sit on her, and we worked with the reins, and so there comes a point where it's like, okay, shit or get off the pot. You know, if you choose to work with your horses for a year before you crawl on them and ride them or get them to quit bucking, that's entirely up to you. And if that's what it takes, sometimes that's what it takes. But don't go bad mouthing me about patience and what I'm not doing or doing or whatever because 99% of the time I get done what I say I'm going to get done and they turn out to be pretty darn good horses in the end for their owners when they go when they come up here to get them I ain't had anybody tell me they couldn't get along with their horse when they took them home so You tell me whether my way is right or not. Might not be right for everybody, but it kind of works for me. How long have we been going on the vid? All right, switch it. We're still riding. <laughs>